should be played at high volume. This should be played at high volume. This should be played at high volume. Preferably in a residential area. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour do not represent Cox Media Group or its sponsoring. Anything you hear may and will be used against you. Thank you. Voted as best local podcast in Tampa Bay by the Creative Loafing. You're listening to Hoppy Hour. What up? What is happening? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. And as you guys know, I like to promote and have the funniest comedian from the Tampa Bay area on because this is one of the most underrated cities in America when it comes to comedy. So live at Hoppy Hour is comedian Chuck Glass. What's up, dude? What's going on, man? How are you doing, man? How's everything been? It has been fantastic. 2016 has been a pretty decent year so far. How about you? I'm doing great, man. I just want to make it in this business, so I keep on grinding. And 2015 was great, but 2016, I've never been happier, man. How's the comedy road been for you? So far, so good. I um, I got married in December, uh, so I took a lot of time off at the end of 2015. But uh, 2016, you know, with my not only my stand up and God jokes, we're going to be killing it. It's going to be all over the place. And how much prep do you guys put into it? Um. I do a lot because I'm the creative director, myself and Barry Naylor, uh, mm-hmm. who's also a comic in the area. Yeah. We're the, the creative directors, so we put a lot of, um, I don't want to say legwork into it, but a lot of time building lineups and building new games and creating the, uh, the, the theatrics of the whole thing and putting that all together. But when it comes to just performing, it's all made up on the spot. Dude, how do you do that? I can't even make up a script here, man. How do you do it? <laughs> it's It's... When you first think about it, it's really difficult. You're like, how are you? How are you just funny? You just funny people are funny, no matter what. When you just talk, you're just funny. It just happens. Do you guys have like an outline where you'll be like, we'll talk about Trump today. We'll talk about this tomorrow. Nope. Not, you don't not have any outline. outline. No, we have. Uh, what we do is we have a lineup of games we play. So when we do when we go into the show, we'll be like, okay, this is the game. These are the rules of this game. And then we go into the audience and say, hey, what do you, what do you, give us a suggestion, anything, person, place, event, whatever you want to talk about. And they can say anything from Trump. They could say, you know, a lot of it's like uh, strip clubs or stupid stuff like that. And we'll create an entire environment, entire scene, entire one-liners on just that suggestion. Which topic comes to your mind where someone said it and it was an absolute bomb or you guys just could not get it done? Um... They're very few and far between. The only time I see when things bomb, not bomb per se, but just it's hard to come up with something, is we do a game called HBO Special where we uh, it'll say, okay, the world's worst of something. And you'll say doctor, and you'll come up with the world's worst doctor. And we'll give examples yeah. and act it out. And sometimes people will do crazy stuff that some of us never heard of, like they'll name anime characters. And we're just like, uh, uh, this is outside my nerddom. I can't figure this out. I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh I have no idea. Yeah, I saw that happen, too, because I was uh, at the crumpled napkin event at Side Splitters because I interned with Law Smith at his company, Toco Works, and they had the crumpled napkin, and it was a whole bowl of all these different topics, and they would go from Trump to pedophiles, because it's whatever people submit. See, that's real easy to go to. <laughs> Trump to pedophilia, it's fan, it's, that's, that's a straight line. That's, there's no, oh, how am I going to figure this out? It's like, well, it's pretty easy. <laughs> Um, but yeah. yeah, when you go from like you Trump to, I, I don't know, the, bananas. Yeah. Well, that one you could probably figure out. I think he's his same like skin tone as a banana. Um, <laughs> but, but like, okay, you go from Trump and then talk about, I don't know, the dad from family matters. Like it's hard to make that one work, but how we nervous do you get up there? When I first started extremely nervous, extremely, uh, my first show ever I was shaking so bad I held the mic. I had to hold the mic against my chest because my hand was shaking. I did the same thing when I was at Opie Radio last week in New York City. I was like grabbing it and you're like, dude, let go. Just relax. Yeah, you get so nervous because you want to make sure that you get your point out. And when you first begin, and I'm trying to get better, like for me, I sometimes interrupt guests because I want to get a point in. So for comedy, for you, did you ever find yourself interrupting people because you needed to get something in? Um, like as in, oh, you mean like with God jokes or just in overall, just when you're performing? Um, well, I mean, in stand up, it's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to interrupt people since you're the only one up there. But yes, when I first started in God jokes, that was a thing. Cause I, 
came from a stand-up world when when I started doing stand-up, where it's like my opinions are funnier than yours; they need to be louder than yours. And because we all have egos, that's it. It's it. You know, we're all narcissistic parakeets. So <laughs> we, uh, so I, so I would always either walk over people's lines or try to get my joke in, even though it didn't fit the scene. And then as I grew up, I should say, or matured in the improv scene, you realize, hey, you have to play a part. It's just like acting. Yeah. You just have to play your part. And, you know, you, sometimes you're the lead, sometimes you're the support. For me, such guys like Drew Garabo and Mike Kelta have helped me in town. Who are some people that have taken you under your wing? Um, the the owner, or not the owner, the CEO, the creator of God Jokes, um, Daniel Motown Pride, Jefferson. Uh, he is... Uh, He's pretty much made me who I am. He's he's mentored me and uh, a lot of the comedians in the area as well. Uh, Barry Naylor, Tarek Lewis, Nina, uh, Ramdat. I think you know Nina. Yeah. Um, and you, I don't know if you know Tarek and Barry personally. I've heard the names. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're all in the group together and just collaborating with funny people makes it better. And I like and I respect a lot of the Tampa Bay comedians as well. So, Have you ever had to get rid of someone from the group because it just didn't work? Yeah. We've had to. It's we've had to. Uh, I don't not to drop name. I don't want to name names, but yeah. there's been times where they've they have their own idea and it just doesn't meld well. And as much as coaching and uh, you know, hey man, this is how this is going to work. We need you to kind of do it. And they're like, no, I'm going to do it my way. It's it just doesn't work. It, you have to be a team player. What's an example where it just was completely opposite to you guys? What do you mean opposite? Like just. Like, what type of comedy do you guys do where the person you guys get rid of would be doing their comedy? Um, I'm trying to think of a, a specific example. Like we is it doing, maybe where their ego gets in the way? It's what it is. It's we have we were having a, we were doing a like the I think the the straw the the straw that broke the camel's back. We were doing a show at um, at a college and huge crowd, fantastic the show was going over great. This one game just wasn't quite hitting the way he wanted it to so he just stopped the game and started doing his own thing right in the middle and it left everybody no, else out in the wind yeah, you're lying right i swear he goes oh, i'm not going out Lord. like that started doing his own thing and then it was like oh man okay and i was new at the time so i didn't i didn't i couldn't say anything <laughs> but everybody else all the other veterans in the group were like are you effing kidding me man that is bad so yeah. basically he didn't know what to do so he made it about him well it just wasn't hitting so he he wanted he wanted to do his own thing so. To me, that's someone that needs to do a show by themselves, if it's a podcast or whatever, because it seems like he wouldn't work in a group setting. It, the funny thing is, he was—he's extremely talented, and, I, and he's he's still a good friend. He's he's still you know a Got Jokes alum, but he's you know it's it's always been he's he's a what is he's a he's a tornado man. You can't predict him. Can't predict it. Sometimes those are the most talented people, and sometimes those are the most narcissists are the ones that you can't predict and you don't know what to expect. They're very moody. He's, he, was the, he was the most talented, one of the most talented uh, performers I'd ever come across. But again, you're right. It's just, it was just so unpredictable. It's hard to, you know, it's not to control, but it's hard to, you know, work with someone like that. How easy are you to work with? Um, that depends on who you ask. Yeah. <laughs> I think I get along with everybody. Um, some people have their own opinions of me. Uh, a lot of them don't know me. That's how uh, it is with me too. Yeah. I, um, I, I, I don't know. I think I got a bad rep, um, in the Tampa Bay comedy community sometimes, depending on who it is, uh, that, I don't know, can I curse in the show? Say whatever the fuck you want. Fucking A. Uh, that I'm an asshole and that I'm just, um, a jerk and I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm. Uh, and I was like, mainly because I don't, I take it very seriously what I do. I, I perform when I do stand up. I sit, take the entire show, or the entire pre-show, and I'm not in the bar drinking. I'm not mingling with people that are coming to the show. You're in the you, zone. Exactly. I'm rehearsing because it's important to me. If you go to see Kevin Hart, if you go to see anybody, do you see them before the show? No. Never. You see them after the show. I don't mingle. I mingle after the show, and a lot of them, oh, he's a jerk. He doesn't want to talk to any of us. He thinks he's better than us. It's like, he has to get ready for the show. Like, what the hell? Yeah, that's not it. And a lot of and people who talk, some people talk shit about me, and I know, and I've heard it. I've heard it. They may not know if I heard it, but I've heard it. And it's been people that I've, I've paid to be on my shows, and people I've, you know. Does it hurt you? It does a little bit because they don't know who I am. Uh, but again, I, I, it's hard to, it's hard to really talk shit because i don't know them so i don't really you know some people i do and some people i know some people i don't 
but it's I just kind of take it as it is. You know, you never get somewhere. It, I never take time out of my day to knock someone down because I'm focused on what I'm doing. I have a where I have haters that I think are annoyed by how aggressive and how passionate I am. And my girlfriend lately has been kind of putting me in check. I'm a little too focused on radio. But at the same time, that's kind of how I've gotten to where I am. So I think in life you need a healthy medium. But I think a lot of times people just feel threatened because they see what we're doing, you know? Yeah, and it's – it's and it, you're right. You do need a balance. You definitely need a balance. And and it's like uh, I've worked – a lot of people that I, that I know, they're like, oh, why is he headlining? I don't headline. I was like, why is he headlining? They don't see all the work I put in that they – They're that jealous. I, they don't see a lot of – well, I can't. I don't want to, you know, say that. But I'll say it. <laughs> I, they just don't see the amount of work I put in. I, the, all the hours I put in just because I'm not at open mics or I'm not, you know, doing the same crappy, you know, 10-seater clubs that they're doing. I just – I put in different different hours at different places. So. Do you ever burn out? On comedies, no. I uh, I get burnt out at, you know, doing work, actual work to get a day job, but not on comedy. How focused are you on making comedy your one job? Uh, very focused. Got comedy, comedy, comedy and baseball are the two things in my life, the two things I've ever like worked at where I can be like, I could do this forever. What part it. of a job would you do with baseball? Uh, a lot. I could do, I, I played up until college till I got hurt. And then, um, and then. What'd you play? First base, That's first cool. base, third, and I pitched until I got hurt, and then right field. I was only really good at first base. Yeah, because <laughs> obviously I'm built for comfort, not speed. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> some places you need speed, um, but I had a pretty decent arm. Then I blew up my rotator cuff, and then that was it. Game over. How heartbreaking were? How heartbroken were you after that? It was. It was pretty rough. Um, it was. I still play tonight, like softball, like competitive softball and tournament softball, but. It's just not the same, but it's it hurts because you know eventually you got to go. Ah, I'm too old for this shit. Now. I feel like you're one of the few baseball fans left. I feel like it's lost all momentum. Uh, it depends on where you go. Tampa's very bipolar when it comes to baseball. I was a Yankee fan up until 1998, until we got the race. Then I was like, "See ya, get out of here." Yeah, because I can't stand Yankee fans <laughs> or Red Sox fans or anybody. <laughs> Really. So you've been a fan since it was the Devil Rays. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I still have a. I was even, um, I, you know, Ryan Adams. Yeah. Um, him and I, we used to go to games in their first year because his grandfather used to have these awesome seats, these awesome seats right next to the dugout, and we get all this. Like I have a Fred McGriff bat from when he played. I have a Paul Sorrento who was the first DH. I have a green and purple jacket that I wore from the first year. Like I have all this cool stuff, but. Yeah, so I, we used to go all the time. We used, we even used to work there together at the drop. How awesome of a year was it in 2008, even though they didn't beat the Phillies? Yeah. The funny thing is, I lived in Philadelphia for 10 years, and I rooted for them when I lived there as a kid. Really? Yeah. And so it was it was, it was, it was rough for me because I was like, oh, I really want the Phillies to win. But no, I really want the race to win because that's where my heart is. It was it was heartbreaking. That was a good year for BJ Upton, if I rem- if I remember correctly. Yeah, Melvin Upton Jr. He goes by now. I don't know what happened there. Really? He, yeah, he 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 doesn't go by Boss Man Jr. What anymore. team is he on now? He plays for San Diego, I believe. That's that probably right? why. Yeah, I think he still plays. I think he plays for San Diego. But um, yeah, I think so because they just traded his brother. Or is it Atlanta? I can't remember. But, doesn't uh, matter. Doesn't I didn't matter. even he know sucks. his name was he Melvin now. now. <laughs> yeah. He sucks now. He uh, Well, he sucked at the end of the race anyway. The reason I like him is because if he took a base, you would get a free taco from Taco Bell. That's it. That's it. That's why. You that's, remember that? Yeah. <laughs> that's it. There you go. Every time he steals a base, Chuck gets diabetes. <laughs> Fantastic. I remember, too, that was the weirdest year for baseball because after they won the uh, Phillies, what they did was they showed each player's reaction to winning. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. It's like Ryan Howard. It was like Chase Utley. Yeah, yeah. And they did it for like five minutes, and it was each and every player. And I'm like, this is kind of over the top. Yeah, it's a little rough. Yeah, it was. It was a that was a rough. Uh, that was a rough day. What was it like growing up in Philadelphia? Um, it was cool. I, it's one of my favorite places. I love the history. I Does love... it get too much hate? Huh? Does it get too much hate? <sighs> I think it gets the right amount of hate. Really? Yeah, because the it's down here. You have you you definitely have assholes. A lot of them, but most of them come from up north. And let me tell you, there are, there are definitely a, a lot of them. But there's some really good people up there, and it's beautiful up there too. So. What do you think of the winter? 
the winter was uh, I was up there during the winter of 94 which would they I think it dropped like 8 feet of snow as a kid awesome as an adult thinking about it I'm like I'd have to shovel all that shit but right now I know Ugh. dude I'm from the Midwest, man, and I worked in radio in Cleveland for three months, and I never saw the sun. But when you move down here, you're like, "Why are there no clouds in the sky?" There's, you know? Yeah, it's so hot. I oh, like. I the love cold. it now. I, oh, dude, I love the hot weather, man. No, I, I dude, look at no. I'm I like I said, I'm built. I'm not built for hot weather. I'm built for cold weather. But I like playing baseball all year long. I think. Well, here's what it is. I used to be really overweight too. I was like two ninety five. Now I'm like two forty. And when I was two ninety five, I loved the cold weather. Now I find sixty five degrees to be cold. But you'll never hear me bitch about it. I hate the people in Florida. They go, "Oh my god, I need a scarf." Like you wouldn't survive a second in Buffalo, New York. For real? No way. You have all these girls in like their UGG boots and their jeans and their scarves. I'm like, it's sixty two. You don't need that much Starbucks. But Get also, it's kind of it. sexy at the same time. My favorite look. I love My yoga pants, dude. Look. I cannot get enough. When they that that look started, I think it was like oh nine, maybe like when it was really starting to take off. And I was at the University of Florida doing a doing a show and hanging out with some buddies. And we went around campus and just started counting the girls who all look the exact same: jeans tucked into boots with their little scarves. And it was just carrying Starbucks. And I think we got up to like seventy five. It was crazy. Some crazy number. Just did you hook up campus. with any of them? No. I was I was dating someone officially at the time. Which, yeah, I'm dating someone too. It's amazing how when you get into a relationship, it changes you as a person, and it makes you more like. How do I describe it? It gives you like responsibilities, and you're not as like lazy and a, as much of a slacker. <laughs> I, I I think I'm lazy in different ways. Like I'm married now. I got married in December. So and she's she thinks she's funnier than me, and I tell her she is because. You know, makes her feel good about herself. And because you want to get laid. Basically. Basically. <laughs> uh, but she, uh, no, she's fan- She's the greatest girl I've ever met. And um, she's, uh, you ever meet, I don't, know if, I don't know if you feel this way, but you ever meet someone just like, oh, now I know why it didn't work out with everybody else. Like, it's, yeah. see, that seems like something you see on fucking Instagram from some chick who hasn't been laid in a while. Yeah. She just puts those inspirational quotes. But it's true. Like, I used to, one of my goals was always, you know, find a cute girl and, like, impress her with my humor and all that kind of now it's like, oh, it's just some other chick. It doesn't even matter anymore. What's awesome about my girlfriend is I can just be myself. I hate when you have to put on the act. Like, oh, you're in radio. Entertain us. It's like, no, I kind of just want to relax. Yeah, I, I, I agree. The One of the things that my girlfriend doesn't care about is actually that I'm Your a wife. That I'm, my, yes, my wife. No, no, I no. had to correct no, no. you. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm talking about my girlfriend. My wife doesn't know about her. Um, no, my, uh, yeah, that my wife, um, my, my new wife, uh, she doesn't care about that I'm a comedian. I tell her jokes. I'm like, hey, what do you think about this? She'll go, eh, I expect more. Really? Yeah, all the time. All That's the time. awesome. So she pushes you to keep on grinding so you yeah. don't get too confident. Yeah. That's how my girlfriend is, too. Like, I can get cocky where I'm like, that was a good interview. And she's like, you say like too much, and I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you're like a valley girl. What the hell is with that? It is weird how <laughs> you can do the best work ever, but it's never good enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's someone's – well, on my own, I, I criticize myself extremely harshly, um, and I don't know. I'm sure you do too, but it's it pushes you. If, if, if you ever think that you're – that's perfect, you're done. You know, there's no point of keep going. You always get, There's always something to improve on, always. Really? Always. How far have your improvements come? Ugh, night and day, from from my first like s- just stand up and improv, it's night and day, absolutely night and day. Isn't it weird when you look at your old work and you're just like, that's what I used to be like? It makes you cringe. Like, oh, is it, like it's, it's so, so douchey. Yo, some of my first jokes, I was like, because I just wrote what I thought, and I was like, oh god, I said that in front of people and they laughed. They must have been really drunk. But now, but they like, laughed. That's good. Yeah, like I think one of my first joke, one of the first jokes I ever told was, like I do just like, some one liners. I was like, do you think that the cars when they when they watch NASCAR in Australia, do you think they go in the other direction? And people laughed at that shit because it's the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, and it's. I was like, that is the worst thing I think I've ever done. I find it's, it creative. It's. I was like, oh, it's awful. But now I sit there and I actually I'm very cerebral when I. Uh, how do you come up with ideas for the show? Do you like most of them are on the toilet? Smoke weed? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I, uh, believe it or not, uh, weed makes me nauseous, uh, and I don't drink very much. 
Um, I just it's it's really sh- sitting in the shower, sitting on the toilet, talking with people, and it's like, oh, this is going to be a funny idea. We Isn't it amazing when you're trying to think of ideas for what you want to do, and you come up with that one that is killer, and you're like, yes, yes, and you write it down. You wake up in the middle of the night and write it down. Absolutely, just random jokes. You just leave your smartphone. Leave your smartphone on the bed. Go, go. You know, take a shit. You're going to come up with the craziest stuff because you have nothing to do, except your brain. That's it. You're Meditating listening. is when I come come up with ideas too. You know, that's when I'm in the zone. When do you meditate? I go on YouTube and I search up meditation videos, and there's a few that are like six hours of like the music that you would hear if you went to some Oriental restaurant. Like just what, like listening to Enya for on loop. Oh, and it's so relaxing, dude. <laughs> I'm trying to get my girl into it, but it's weird doing it with another person. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's more of a private thing. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't. Yeah, I like to when I meditate. Like I don't say meditate, but I just kind of like relax. I'll go and sit on like on the bridge here. There's a little side road sitting next to the water. I'll just sit and you know in the back of my car. And just, I love going to the beach, dude. Yeah, I'm not a beach person. I like. Oh, water. I love the beach, dude. It's so relaxing. I, I hate sand. Sand oh, gets I in love place. It. I ugh, I can't stand. The, I love the water. I love. Boats, I love all that. I cannot stand sand. I can see how you don't like it. It gets everywhere. You have to be careful not to be messy, but I love hearing the waves come up to the shore. Oh, yeah. Great sound. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Now, where do you want to see yourself in five years? Man, that's a good question. Um, I really like – one of my goals was to be on SNL. I don't know if that's going if to – if I want that anymore. I'd really like to just be – touring and doing stand-up with with my friends like with the people in got jokes and the comics that i respect is there a way to send your work to snl yes there is um a, a lot of times they it just gets you know if you don't catch them in the first 30 seconds they don't, they don't but you can it. catch them with that you can but you're you're competing with thousands upon thousands of people that want the same thing you see have, you really if i were you i would just keep on applying a lo- the, why the, not a lot of the thing, a lot of the people that they get on SNL are from Second City in Chicago, or they improv troops like Got Jokes, except yeah. they're just you know New York, Chicago, L.A. They Pete know. Davidson, man, he is talented and he worked hard for what he did because yeah. he's young too. Yeah, he's like twenty two because he was doing a show and the guy that runs SNL saw him mm-hmm. live. That's how he got found. Yeah, and uh, it's how a lot of them get found. Like I was watching, uh, what was I watching today? Oh, Jay Farrow. You ever see Jay Farrow? Big fan. His impressions are on. He, he did a Kevin Hart. If you close your eyes, you wouldn't know it wasn't Kevin Hart. It was his fantastic. Obama's pretty good too. Yeah, his Obama's not bad. But, you know, uh, Barry in our uh, in Got Jokes does a hell of an Obama as well. I feel like it's very easy to do Obama. I can't do it, but I feel like he's not hard to. It's do it, if, if you have a if you have kind of like that low, I guess a Denzel I'm Barack voice. Obama. Yeah, he like pronounces words like this. <laughs> You have to like uh, put pauses in the middle. He's it's like a he's like a black Christopher Walken, almost like America. Uh, you have to uh, drag out that uh, and then start speaking again. He that's that's how you do the Obama. It's, he is going to be the best motivational speaker ever. That's what I think he'll do. He'll do like <laughs> speeches about going from being broke on the beach to being president. I hope I hope after the presidency he's like ah bitches I was born in like Ghana fuck you ha 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 I'm a Muslim <laughs> what's up motherfucker J K L O L I don't like Trump speaking of politics I'm scared oh, God I didn't know look I actually said this in my show the other day I like it was funny at fucking first it was really like, ha 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 like, Megan's on her period Megan Kelly <laughs> ah. it was funny at first you're like oh my God Trump's actually doing something it's funny ha ha. He's saying what he likes. Then all of a sudden he started winning. And I'm like, oh, shit. This is – it's getting – my wife is Mexican. I can't I can't live in Guadalajara because they're going to send her ass back. I can't do it. Is she very offended by him? Um, My wife is very political. I am not. She cannot stand him. She cannot stand him. Every Mexican stand. hates him. Yeah. And I love when he tries to say – I actually get some of the Mexican votes. It's like, yeah. where? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, she showed me the other day. She was, uh, one of her friends got an email about casting for a Latina, like, sub- Trump supporter. They, they were casting for it. Like, really? Yeah, like actresses, yeah. That's bizarre, man. He seems like he's beginning to lose everybody, but what scares me is I really hate Ted Cruz with all my heart. There is no good candidate. There is no good candidate 
for president right now. None. And even though, like, if, like, I, you know, you take, I'm a, I'm in the middle. Like, I'm an independent. So, Trump is, like, out there. Uh, Ted Cruz, he scares me. He, he looks like the, he looks like the grandfather from the Munsters. And he looks like a pedophile, too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Rubio, I think, is a robot. Um, Hillary Clinton, everything that's gone on with her in the past, I think she would be a, a good president, per se, but I don't trust her as a person. Yeah, I feel like she wants to be president for the power trip. Exactly. And and, and, and Bernie Sanders, Bernie, remind, uh, Bernie has a lot of great things to say, but he's saying it like a grandpa that's dying. He's like, yeah, I'll buy you a Mercedes. It's not going to matter because I'm going to be dead in five years. He seems like the crazy old man on the front porch who is like, How's it going, kids? <laughs> He's just out of his mind. He's uh, it's it, there's really no cho- there's. It, I wish John Stewart would run for president. I would vote for John Stewart all day long. I'd vote for John Oliver if he was American. Yeah, right. <laughs> what he said about Trump? Did you watch that video? I did. I watched. He that. demolished him. That is a video that he that he'll be remembered for. That's, that's a that's video that might ruin Trump. That it, it was it was fantastic. I don't know what's I don't know what it's going to take to take Trump out. I don't think he'll win. Hopefully, if if he does this, 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 the Roman Empire fell. We'll fall. It's it's possible. Have you seen the movie Idiocracy? Uh, bits and pieces. I've never watched. Yes, the whole thing. we are there. If Trump wins, it's officially come to life. Jesus, I'm gonna have to watch it now. It's on HBO Go, I believe. Yeah. If I not, have... just rent it on Amazon Prime. Trust me. I, it's yeah, worth I have it. Netflix and Amazon Prime and Hulu. I have all that stuff. You're gonna have to rent it. It's not on Netflix. It's so worth renting. Yeah. It will scare you but make you laugh at the same time. Mm. It's it's the one with uh, Luke Wilson, right? Yeah, where the whole world's retarded. Oh, okay. And he goes into the future because he gets frozen for a government experiment. And this was filmed in '05, so it's the year 2005. And he goes 500 years into the future of 2505, and the world is all about sex. And money and Terry Crews is the president. It's fantastic. And it's I'd vote for Terry Crews. Oh yeah. <laughs> you'll watch the movie and you'll actually want Terry Crews to be president more than Trump. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, just man. Just for his peck moves alone. I'm just over it. I don't care anymore. I'm like, whatever. Screw yeah. up this country. Who it's, cares? Yeah. <sighs> We're never gonna win. Uh, We're doomed. Hopefully not yet. Hopefully not yet. Now, before I let you go, where can people find your work and some? what are some of your upcoming shows? Um, we have a couple of big ones. I have a couple of big ones coming up um, this month – or next month, I'm sorry. Uh, April 1st, God Jokes is officially – has an official uh, – we just struck a deal with Stageworks Theater in uh, in downtown Tampa. Congrats. That's Thank great. You. Yeah, we're going to be uh, – we're the improv troupe of Stageworks, uh, their house team, and we have a huge show – that Barry and I are creating called the God Jokes Experience. It's going to be theatrical. It's going to be improv. We're trying to bring improv, like whose line is it anyway, did to the mainstream. Did that influence you? Yes, but ours is different. Yeah. Our improv is different. It's it's more edgy. It's a lot edgier, and it's not it's not hokey. It's not corny. It's it's a bunch of stand up comedians with that type of ego doing making stuff up on the spot. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. And then um and then on the twenty seventh of April, I'll be headlining at the improv, the Tampa Improv. Well, dude, keep up the good work. I like what you're doing. And whenever you need me to promote a show or you think there's a show I should come out to, hit me up because I love promoting local comedy here in Tampa. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. It's uh, Love your podcast. Listen to it all the time. I appreciate it, man. Hell yeah, man. I appreciate it. Tampa Bay is a very loyal town that has a lot of talent. Like It's a town where talent. it's big. It's a major market, but it's one where if you work hard enough, you can get your name out there. Absolutely. Well, dude, keep up the good work, man. Yeah, thanks, man. You too. This has been Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, saying peace out. See you. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour.